we're back here today working on the display case again uh, I just I just started this morning here and uh, and decided that we'd just start to top and work our way down today I, I jump around on this thing uh, I think maybe in the last video we talked about putting the trim around the doors uh, where the doors is going to go for the track and I'm going to get to that later I've got some pieces actually cut for that already but <clears throat> I decided uh, well things was kind of calm here in the shop then I'm going to work on this molding I'm going to put some crown molding on the top of the cabinet and then uh, I'm going to put some base on it haven't decided yet on the base but I've got the crown laid out here pretty good sized piece of crown with some dental work on it so some dental molding there uh, carved into it and it uh, it's really nice piece and uh, I think it's going to look really well on a display cabinet to uh, spruce it up just a little bit but what I want to attempt to do here in this uh, in this segment is show you how I cut this molded now it's a whole different whole different thing to to uh, to cut and install crown molding to begin with uh, I know a lot of people has uh, problems with it uh, getting it cut right at the right angle and uh, <clears throat> of course the more complex the walls the harder it is to do uh, and there's a gazillion different ways <laughs> on the internet that tell you how to cut crown molding and, and make it fit a lot of people just cope it uh, sometimes that's the best best way sometimes not just depend on the situation uh, and as a rule in the shop here it's uh, it's pretty easy to mess with the crown molding when you're doing cabinets and stuff because we built the cabinets here so they're square and 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 true and everything uh, if you've done a good job on the cabinet carcasses then they're square and the corners are square so it's relatively easy to install a crown molding on those uh, you just got to make sure and get your angles cut cut the right direction so anyhow I I'm not I'm not a very good teacher and uh, so but I'm going to show you how I do my crown molding and how I keep up with the cuts and uh, and that sort of thing by no means the best way or the only way or even the correct way I don't know I, I, I'm thinking there isn't any correct way to do molding you do it the way that that suits you best for your working style and, and your understanding of it uh, and I'm going to use some terms here when I get to talking about this molding. They're probably not even accurate terms in the world of professional molding installers, okay? Uh, <laughs> but that didn't make any difference. Uh, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to work with somebody and explain to them what I want. I'm going to take my measurement off the cabinet and I'm going to cut my piece of molding to fit. And I know what it is. And I'll make some mental notes of it. I'll call it a miter, a miter and a bevel. Uh, now I'll stand my crown molding up, even though my my miter saw will do bevels. Uh, most everybody's will, and, and a lot of people prefer to do it that way. They will lay it down flat, and then you you know you, you dial in your miter and your bevel, and then you cut your piece. Uh, but I will stand mine up on the saw. So the only thing I have to do is is adjust the the miter. And we'll adjust the inside and outside by which way we turn the molding. As a general rule, your molding that's going overhead for the inside corners, you, you turn your stock upside down uh, when you cut your when you cut your molding this way. When you stand it up like it's going up in the corner <clears throat> or up on the side of the cabinet, and you've got it stood up on the miter saw, you turn it upside down to do those inside miters and that gives you that gives you the right bevel so you'll have an inside bevel and outside I, I, it sounds complicated and, and I'll show you uh, how I do it like I said by no means is this the correct way this is just the way that I do it so let me turn the camera around here get it on the saw got the miter saw set up here let me get the thing adjusted and, uh, before we can see it now, our first piece on the side here, we're going to have 14 and 1 8 inches from the back of the cabinet to the very front of the cabinet. So what we're going to need to measure is 14 and 1 8 inches off of this piece of molding here. But you always got to remember 
when you're, when you're doing the measurements, when you're measuring like the inside of the cabinet, do a little demonstration here, maybe. This, this is just a two before, but let's assume that the, this dish is bigger and this is the side of the cabinet up here. When you take that measurement from here to here, and it's on the top, you always got to remember that that measurement is to the short side of the crown molded when you cut the miter on it to make the corner. The measurement of the actual cabinet is to the short side. Uh, that way you don't have to try to figure in how much the molding stands out from the cabinet and all that sort of thing. So you measure from the short side. So that'll be the actual measurement from here to here on the cabinet. That's 14 So we'll lay that out here on the piece. So that was the furnace that came home too, so uh, uh, that thing makes a lot of noise. Let's see if I can turn it off. It'll uh, cool the strip down there and turn off. So anyhow, we've got, our, we've got our piece marked here. And this is where I'm talking about, I'm standing, at, uh, I'm standing a piece up on this, on the saw like it, like it mounts on the wall. And it creates a, a 90 back here. And I've already got the miter set up here, so our short end of this molding is going to be on the top here because, like I said a while ago, we've got this piece of molding upside down on the saw. This is the short end, so that means that as it comes toward the top, it gets longer. That'll give us a crown around the corner. And it gives us the proper bevel. That's the reason for turning it upside down. So you can have a miter one way, or I can get it to it. You can have a miter one way, but the bevel on that miter can be either way. And you control that by which way you turn the stock. I know it sounds complex to somebody that's never done it or never seen it done, but you can get some more information about it on the internet and it probably can explain it a whole lot better than I can. But like I said, I'm just gonna do it here how I do the molding. So this this is a top piece. It's an outside corner. That, that, that'll go around the outside of the corner up there. It's just a top piece. It's an outside miter with an inside bevel. Now that sounds really confusing, but as the, as the piece is cut, with it stood up here, be, it'll be beveled and it'll go toward the inside of the molded. Like I said, that's just the way that I keep it straight. So let's cut this piece and we'll uh, Look at it then. And another thing that I do too when I cut mine, if at all possible, I always try to have enough on hand for when each piece I cut, I cut it just a little bit long, maybe a sixteenth. Or even a little bit more if possible. Because that way you can test it and you can always trim off a little more. You certainly can't put it back. But I cut it just a little bit long and see that everything fits. Then I bring it back up to the saw and I sneak up on the actual measurement that I need. I cut it a little long here and I cut this miter. If the miter works out and everything's good and I need to cut it off again, I'll take it to the arm saw and I'll cut this straight right here. It's gonna be on the back. So I'll make a straight cut. I only cut here one time. If the, if that's, if, so if the miter's correct, the bevel's correct, I'll only make that cut once. If I need to trim off of it, I'll trim it off from the other end. When I do the sides, when you do the piece that connects the two, you don't have any choice. You have to cut the miter until it fits. But anyway, here we are. We'll cut this off and we'll go from there. So now here's what we've got. We've got the piece that's going to go on the side of the cabinet. You can see the mark, maybe. We can see that mark or not, that little pencil mark there. Anyway, it's about a sixteenth of an inch long. So this will be our molding and it'll go up here this way. I'm getting out of the camera range. <laughs> so this will be our molding and it'll go up here this way. It's our actual measurement was 14 and an eighth. And that's the short side down here. 
So this will come right to the edge, and here's the miter, and the other piece will come back in. Now this is what I call an inside bevel. And the battery's dead in the camera, so I guess we better uh, best we better get something on charge. Anyway, this is what's called an inside bevel. Let me show you right quick before the before the camera dies. And this one here is what I call an outside bevel. The bevel lays over and faces the outside of the molding. This would be something if you used on an inside corner. But we're not going to have that, so we're going to cut this off and start again with the next piece. But uh, that'll be when I come back after I get the battery swapped okay, out. Okay, got us a freshly charged battery, and I'm back out here again. So now. This is the piece that we cut a moment ago from one side. Now we're going to cut the other piece to go on the other side, which will wind up being, uh, <clears throat> this is of course the same length, it's 14 and 1 8, and that's to the short end. We're going to have an outside corner, so the short one will be on the bottom, short end of the piece of mold, and it's going to be an inside bevel. So we move this piece down here, instead of cutting off up there and starting again, just move to the other end of the board. So we've already got the straight edge. We'll make this cut on it right here and then we'll have this piece. We've got it set up here, we've got it marked, we've got it on an angle, we've got the saw set properly and we're ready to cut. So now this is not how this is going to work, but uh, just as an example of how it would be when we get it together, there will be the corner. I can get it held up here together tightly, like it's supposed to go. There will be the corner on uh, how it'll look on the cabinet. Pretty nice piece. All right, now we're going to take and measure across the front, and we'll get the long. The long piece, uh, and see how it works out. Be Fifty-nine and seven eighths of an inch. <clears throat> now the end that we got here, of course, the miter's wrong on it, and the bevel, because uh, this was the waste from what we cut the end of it off. So we're going to go back and cut this to make it right. So the the bottom down here where the dental is, and the, and the fancy trim. That's the bottom of the molding. We have got it upside down on the saw. So we're going to bring this up here. I'm going to turn the saw back around. Get our miter this way. Now I'll put our bottom right here. This is the bottom of the molding. That'll be our shortest point. I need to come along. And it'll be an inside bevel. So that'll, that'll give us one end that's correctly cut for the front piece. So there is one end. Now, we'll need to mark it and cut the other end. So that's 59 and 7 eighths from here. Always hard to do, but. And here's, here's, here's something that we, like we talked about earlier. I always, uh, let me move my supports in on my miter saw. If you've got a miter saw stand and you're using it uh, when you're doing 
really long molding. Of course, this molding doesn't have to be very long, but if you're putting up crown molding in, in a home, something like that, you, you always want to use the longest piece as possible. Uh, piece it as few times as possible. So it really helps to have uh, support on the outfeed there on your miter saw. So anyhow, <clears throat> this one, this I've got it marked here, and uh, this is one of those where we're going to cut it just a little bit long. It's 59 and 7 eighths is the required length. What I'm actually going to do is cut it about 60. And then we'll get up here and we'll put one side of the molding on to get started. And then we'll go to cutting it ever so slightly and, and, and what they call sneak up on it, the actual cut, to get it exactly what we want to fit across there. It'll fit, it'll fit exactly instead of trying to get it exactly with a ruler. Sometimes hard to do on a piece of molding like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. I'm gonna cut it just, uh, like I said, about an eighth of an inch heavy. And that way it'll give us room to, uh, to come back and adjust if we need to. And there's our cut. And it was just like a while ago. It's an outside miter, which the, the bottom is the short end. The top is the long. And it's an inside bevel, where the bevel goes back to the inside of the molding. So when it takes, you turn the molding up, And then the molding goes up on the cabinet like this. So let me move, uh, let me move the uh, the pieces and the camera over here in front of the cabinet, and uh, we'll get started putting it on here. Okay, we've got the, we've got this piece uh, turned around here and laid back up on the saw and the outfit table. We're using it as my bench. So now we're going to start being a uh, laying this stuff up here and see see how it fits. Now looks like we're going to be pretty close right here. All right. Put a piece up here and look at it. Now I can see how this actually goes together here, maybe. piece that go on here and this one here. Yeah, we've actually got a very, very good fit here. So, I think we'll be, I think we'll be going. <laughs> Okay, I've got the, I've got me a line scratched here. I want where I want the molding to go. Apply a little bit of glue. Camera around here to see what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to use this square to ensure that I get it that, that it goes straight and square on there down my line that I've got scribed. And you go right up against that and against this. And I'm going to take this piece and just check the fit of the miter. Oh, it looks great right there. Right on line with my scribe, I'm going to be able to set my piece of molding right against that square. And that keeps it straight. And true. I'll take this other piece and check the miter. Oh, it's going to fit great. That means I've got it the proper length. And hold it up there tight against that square and we can pin it in place. A few more pins. 
So there. Now we've got this piece glued and pin, those pins will hold it till the glue dries. And, and then those things are virtually in, just impossible to see. So now we can go ahead and install the other piece down through there on. Okay, now there's those pieces anchored on. Let me get this side over here anchored properly. We'll be good. Now those pins hold that there good till the glue dries. Uh, get me a rag and wipe off the excess glue and uh, we'll be good with the molding. Okay, this is what our crown molding looks like installed. I got it, uh, got it glued up on there and pinned to hold it in place and uh, fitted. It turned out really well. I think it looks really nice on the cabinet. Even though it is a different species, this, this molding is oak. Uh, I did look at some of those uh, existing pieces there. And, uh, and there, was, there was variations in the species and the color. And I think uh, whoever built the previous cabinets must just use whatever they had. <laughs> anyway, it will match up in, uh, in the area that it's going. But I think it turned out great that... Uh, that, that crown molding looks looks extra good on there. Uh, I think it turned out really well. So now the next thing I guess on the agenda would be come in here and put these these pieces around the opening. Uh, I've got a test piece cut. I cut these an inch and five sixteenths wide. This is my test piece here. It's just an old piece of pine. But uh, the track that the doors will ride on, the, the extruded aluminum track that the doors is going to ride on, the bottom and the, uh, uh, the track part at the top is an inch and a quarter wide. So these are just a sixteenth wider. And what, I, what I'm going to do here, see if I can get the camera around here where I can show you what I've got in mind. Cut a rabbit in this piece right here and, and this rabbit is exactly the depth to fit over this where we where it's just sticking up here down to the shelf and the width of it's the, the exact width of this uh, bottom rail here and what this will do is this will sit in here it'll go on that piece just like that uh, I don't, i'm not sure if you can see that uh maybe anyway this this will go on this piece exactly like this right here and be anchored to it and then the track for the door will set on top of it also going to have that same piece on the sides uh, where it'll give it the width be the same width all the way around and that way we make sure that the door glass has a place to stop so going to cut these pieces and cut the rabbits and put them in here next and uh, go ahead and finish out this opening here so